Ooh um, all right. So I think I've, I have a couple of curiosities and things I wanted to bring up. Um, if that's all right. Sure. Yep. We, good? Cool, we've cool. got a few minutes. Yep. Cool. cool. Um, what happens on the boat when there is light? That is a question. Like, I'm sure that there, you go around the whole world. There's probably some lightning on the boat, right? Like, and you're told, like, I know from sailing on lakes or whatever, or even swimming, you, when you're, in, when you're in a body of water, <coughs> mm. <laughs> you're sticking up a little bit, which is like a draw <laughs> to lightning, right? Like, and I'm just curious, yes, what, have you had any lightning or? Yeah. Oh, we've had lots of lightning. Yeah. We've had some <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing, uh, light shows. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're like a, a metal rod sit, sitting in the middle of the ocean, you know, asking for trouble basically. Um, yeah. but, um, yeah, what all we can really do on the boat is uh, we anytime there's lightning within our radar, uh, which is typically around 10 mile radius, we uh, turn our uh, a lot of our instruments off mm -hmm. so that we don't have if if we got hit, our electrical systems would not be compromised. Um, so we shut down our whole elect uh, electronic system, which which makes it a little trickier to to navigate the boat and to helm the boat but uh, from a safety perspective it certainly helps mm -hmm. and then you know you do your best to uh, follow what's going on on the radar and try to avoid some of the where the the big uh, cells are um, and uh, yeah you do your best to avoid the, the worst of it um you know, a couple of races ago, I think on the way to Halong Bay, we had a, a big, big thunderstorm that had a water spout uh, go by. Um, and one yeah, of the what, boats was, was what's within a like a mile of the water spout. <laughs> what's uh, a water spout? Is that like water in the air spinning? Yeah, it's like a tornado, but uh, well, it's like a tornado over the water. Yeah, basically. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I've never so even So there's heard water basically thing. going vertically up into the clouds, which... Yeah, it's not really what you want to see. So no, uh, no. <laughs> so yeah, there was there was one of the boats, Perseverance, that was within a mile of of the actual water spout. They have video of it. Oh my um, gosh! And the skipper decided to turn her, her engine on and get the boat out of the area as quickly as possible. And then once once the storm had moved past, the the, the requirement that the race has was that they go back to the location where they had started their motor and then resume mm. sailing from there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of intense weather around uh, the planet. Uh, we do, we do the best we can to avoid it as opposed to heading towards it. Mm. But uh, um, in lots of parts of the world, you know, there's regular activity and uh, yeah, you just do the best you can to stay safe. Yeah. Wow. That is uh Pretty wild. I was like, I, I, I had this thought that there would be an answer like, oh, well, we just turn on the grounding rod or something and then mm. it's all good. <laughs> but that's not the well, case. The boat, the boat does have a grounding system. Um, one of the boats has, uh, I think, how long Bay got hit on the way from Uruguay to Cape Town mm -hmm. um, and, you know, tried a few things on their electronic system. But Generally, it didn't do any damage to to the boat. Nobody got hurt. There was no. So they're safe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think. I mean, cool. I, that really. You know, I'm glad I asked that part of that question because mm -hmm. I just. It's good to know that there's some measure in place to keep you safe, like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, lots of measures to keep us safe. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've talked a lot about how the boats are built for this. Like the boats mm -hmm. are they're they're built for the big waves. They're built for that sort of thing. So, um. So I actually want to extend out some gratitude um, for you, for Carolyn, your sister, for um, Ian, and for Skipper Mike, because like, just in my, in my life, in the last couple of weeks, there have been some unfolding circumstances. And these questions and these conversations about like, champagne sailing is something that Mike has been sharing about in the in the log. And um so for me, there's been this idea of like, we got champagne sailing, which is like the best it could be. You're toasting each other on board. It's amazing. <laughs> then there's Carolyn had asked this great question um, about navigating by clouds. And that got us into mm -hmm. like squalls and safety and like urgency, emergence kind of conditions. And then there was a whole other 
conversation that we'd had about light winds. And it's really, I mean, I am here in Colorado because of this conversation, basically. Well, that, and then so anyway, I'll, so a story I want to share. So um, there's something going on at home. There's a health concern, you know, which is getting sort of more and more significant as time unfolds. And um, uh, I was actually, we've been talking in the global coach community about light winds and champagne sailing and urgent and emergent situations. And I was sort of realizing that for me, like light winds or, or in other words, where there, you can't really, the wind isn't coming from any direction. It's hard to understand what to do mm -hmm. that to me, that has been feeling like emergency. Like, I'm like, shit, I need to do, oh, I just, like, I need to do something. Oh crap. You know what I mean? Like, what do I do? Uh, uh. And, um, so a decision was made that I wouldn't come to Colorado. Like I made the decision not to come to Colorado. And then the next day I was on my walk, which was the morning I should have left and come here last week. And I heard your voice. I heard you talking about people getting off the boat, even though the, the folks at home are like, you shouldn't do that. You should stay. <laughs> We've got this. And, and in my life, there's, you know, a significant person who basically said, well, my two senses that you go and you spend this time with your parents. And I, I realized that morning, I was like, boy, like, I've been making all these decisions feeling like this is an emergency. And, and, and really what this is, is, is a, you know, a sort of requirement for bringing patients and seeing how it unfolds. And I, I was able to go back and say to my folks, like, I don't know what's possible, but is it, is there any possibility that like maybe this trip could be reinstated because I can support from there, first of all, and get home quickly if I need to. And uh, long story short, I made it out here. <laughs> so, wonderful. Yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because, you know, you know, I was thinking as you were describing your, that situation about, you know, in the last race, we had a, a day where we had a, an afternoon watch when we were on. Uh, and when we came on at lunchtime, the wind had just completely dropped to zero. It was like just glass ocean all around us. Mm. You know, we get handed the boat. <laughs> Good luck, guys. You know, enjoy your afternoon. <laughs> um, and for the next six hours, we probably tried about a dozen or 14 or 15 different combinations of sails and and approaches to get the boat moving and um, and, you know, and the crew were awesome. You know, we, we would try something and we would give it a few minutes to see if we were getting anything. And then we would, you know, and it was typically me deciding, no, let's try this. And and so they'd all scurry around the boat and put some new sails up and, just, and it was probably one of the most enjoyable watches for the whole collection of us because, we didn't feel like the pressure, it wasn't like a, a, a negative pressure to, to, you know, that we had to come up with this solution, like that there was a perfect solution to be found and what's wrong with us for not being able to find it. It was very playful. Mm. It was very mm. much like, yeah, there isn't like, an, there isn't like a guiding breeze here giving us the direction uh that we're looking for there, there's a void of that and so let's play with what what's available to us and see what we can make of it um and that really feels like the kind of what you're describing and i think for you know for a lot of people you know when when you don't have that clarity of of direction or purpose or whatever a lot of people do panic in those cir circumstances um but the other option is to is to enjoy the and and to actually take advantage of the playful opportunity to try a bunch of things and you know throw them against the wall and see what happens and um i think we often don't give ourselves permission to do that because we feel like we're supposed to know we're supposed to have this this guiding wind or this clarity all the time um and you know that's when when you're out on the boat and the wind's not behaving and not not uh, <laughs> it's doing not, what it wants to do. You know, when it's when Mother Nature's clearly reminding us who's in charge, um, it would be very easy to get frustrated if you thought you were supposed to be in control. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, 
the one that that knew what to do at in all times. It is actually the part that I enjoy about sailing is is the fact that you're always reminded, constantly reminded that you're not in charge. You're the one that's responding to what happens, but not the one that's determining what happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the more you can enjoy that and be playful with that, the, the easier life is when when you have those times where it's not exactly clear what the right thing to do is or mm. you know what what the right moment is to to make a decision so so well done glad you're <laughs> glad you made the trip i'm glad to uh, get some skiing in i i heard there was a big snowstorm that came across the country so there might be some good snow in colorado some, yeah, hopefully hope. there's some yeah i might the rumor is that <clears throat> there's some good snow and maybe more even on the way so cool and it's interesting what you say about this too because i the serendipity of all of this like i was supposed to be here right on thursday and instead i I got to go and see my kids' band play on Thursday night, uh, which I wasn't going to be able to do. That was amazing. And I got to spend uh, some time with this loved one in question, which hadn't, you know, hadn't been the plan. And because I wasn't even going to be there. And like, <clears throat> and I just feel, I love this idea that we can be playful with it just because we don't really have a good sense. It doesn't mean that we can we need to bring judgment on ourselves, for example. Like I was, I was really like, you shouldn't have done this. Oh, like I could hear this in my head. I mean, I, I'm good at moving past those or not engaging with them, but like, it's so interesting. The way that I always, always comes back to the way that I think about an event is, is of much more significance in terms of my decision-making and my well-being than the event itself. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, uh, well, I think really like what's coming up, what's coming up for you? Where will we talk to you next? Well, we've got the big trip to Seattle, uh, which is, I think, 5,400 miles or some crazy number like that, uh, yeah. which uh, it's about three and a half weeks is the estimated uh, duration. Uh, so say three and a half to four weeks. Uh, so that'll take us almost to the, you know, the last week of uh, April. And we'll roll into uh, downtown Seattle and uh, looking forward to that because, as you know, in our coaching community, there's a lot of people in Seattle. Funny, I have some some of my most cherished relationships with some of those people, but we've never met in person before. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be really cool. Uh, I used to live in Vancouver and in Victoria, so I have a big crew from up up there that uh, um, some of them are coming down apparently to say hi. I'm looking forward to that. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, as it comes to changing dynamics, I mean, one of the unfortunate things is um, uh, Nick's not going to be able to be there in Seattle. She's going to head back uh, to her hometown to help, help out with uh, some family stuff that's going on there. So, you know, again, dealing with uncertainty which this whole year for the two of us has been you know having very very loosely held plans because we knew that there was a lot of things that might happen that would throw off you know any any sort of certainty on things so mm. so that's too bad um but um you know i'm happy for her that she's able to to go and and be there for her family uh in the way she will be um Hmm. But yeah, so Seattle for me is kind of a funny feeling. I, in a lot of ways, it's not, it's certainly we're a long way from being done when we get to Seattle, but the sense of being hmm. back in North America and close to, you know, home and close to where I used to live. Um, Seattle's, you know, one of my favorite places as well. And so I'm really looking forward to to that, but also, you know, to know that We've got this big monstrous ocean behind us, uh, and we've hopefully, mm. you know, we've done it safely. And and uh, um, I, yeah, uh, it, it's it's the it's one of the probably the leg that most of us are most looking forward to, but also most uh, just cautious about because it it is a big one. It's uh, renowned for for some big big weather and big waves, um, mm. but the idea that we'll be in Seattle and you know be a, a couple of races away from being back in England is uh, pretty surreal to be Very honest. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. And I wanna, um, I do wanna pause here because um, just like a couple of conversations ago, we talked about 
you you had some really great insights on how do you have a a, a relationship with your partner or your family or your loved ones or whatever and like you had you had mentioned expectations and agreements and and that what you were doing with Manik was making sure that everything that is possible could be in an agreement as opposed to an expectation and like as things are unfolding around the world and you you know choices are being made about where where we need to be and everything like that like i i guess i'm curious if that well i don't know it's not a curiosity it's more like a, just a compassion <laughs> yeah it it's not it's not easy um i mean yeah. it's been um i think that uh i think we were really good at it um uh, early on and i think one of the things that's that's hard is is that uh, especially as as we've you know as as Manik has gone t to do the different things that she's been doing, which have been super cool. Um, you know the reality of what her day looks like and the you know the energy she has at different times of the day, the the level of activity she has during the day, versus you know what I'm going through when you know when we're in port and the requirements that are on me and the schedule we have and the exhaustion and like it's hard to match all that up energetically really well and so expectations on you know um you know on how we how well we can connect at each port even if we're she's not physically here just even remotely it's it's more of just trying to understand what each one of us is going through um in our own environments like right now she's uh, manika's in thailand doing a yoga teacher training program, right? And oh. so it's a fairly intensive daily schedule that starts quite early in the morning and then wraps up. Whereas, you know, here, when we're, we're only, we've only been on land, I think for four days here in, in Qingdao, which in a normal turnaround, the first day is is a deep clean of the boat. And then days two and three are boat repairs. And then day four is briefing and getting the boat ready but usually there's some days in between there off. There's right? some so downtime. Like, yeah. Like those are the four work days, but the rest of the days are usually completely off. We haven't had any of those off days. And um, so, and yesterday was freezing cold and pouring rain all day. So it, you know, it made the boat repairs even, even challenging. So it's been a really tough stop to have the energy to, to be able to be a great, partner you know i talk to my kids like trying to do all those mm. things fit it all in i think i'm talking to my parents after we finish this call right and oh, so cool. yeah. trying to do those things um wow. with the reality of what this stop has been is um yeah it's just it it comes down to just being better at communicating of of what each of us is going through and um yeah i would not recommend a year separate traveling the world separately as a as a great relationship building exercise <laughs> yeah. uh, but it yeah. is a it is a test and it has uh, it's been a test but but it's also been a great adventure like what Manix got to do this year she finished writing her book mm. she you know she's done all of these trips and she's been to Japan with Emily she's done a lot of things that have been you know, following breadcrumbs is the way she describes it of not planning, but just seeing what presents itself and then going with that, which for her is just an amazing, amazing opportunity to have a year of doing that. Uh, and, you know, and I've been on a much more regimented and, and controlled schedule um, and just kind of grinding through the year uh, doing this, this sailing trip. So it's been a fascinating experience, but it's, yeah, it's been tough at times for sure. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for um, expanding on that a little bit. And I do feel a lot of all the love and compassion for, for both of you um, and also a lot of inspiration. I mean, I've been, Manik has these beautiful, she will just share out these beautiful Facebook posts that have mm -hmm. a lot of her learning and a lot of pictures. And, um, oh, she makes mandalas everywhere she goes in the mm -hmm. world, which is, just, oh my gosh, they make me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm excited for her for a book too. Like there's a lot. Yeah, you're right. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot going on and and to see you two creating to to really thank you for bringing, you know, me, us into that. It's, it's really inspiring. Mm -hmm. 
Well, um, is there anything, <clears throat> anything we haven't talked about that you wanted to? I know a lot of times there's, I, I love a wildlife check, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I don't know what there's been this, this leg that's been, it's been like that. So. Well, wildlife is an interesting topic when it comes to sailing around Asia because you don't see much of it. And I think that they've removed most of it from the oceans with all the fishing that we, that goes on. Um, mm. so you don't see, you know, you don't see dolphins, you don't see whales, you don't see even a lot of bird life because, well, first of all, the dolphins and the whales would be treacherous being in this area with all the nets and all the fishing going on. Um, but even the lack of birds and, and wildlife, you know, is somewhat telling with respect to what's available for their survival. Um, so, yeah, it's been pretty quiet on that front. Um, hopefully, you know, maybe we'll see something different across the, the North Pacific and mm -hmm. uh, around Japan. Um, but, um, you know, I mean, again, like it's just a, such a unique part of the world to realize where you are and you're sailing through the East China Sea and, you know, like uh, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's given me a very much more, um, I don't know. I don't, respect might not be the right word, but I have a, a deep, profound gratitude for the chance to see the planet in this way. Mm -hmm. um, because you see it, from such a different perspective than you would flying in an airplane from city to city or even mm -hmm. driving from place to place. Um, the vastness of the oceans and the, and, and, you know, the connection of the ocean and, and, and so many of these countries and people's livelihood and all that, like it's, it's pretty profound when you actually get a chance to see it the way we are. And, you know, we're going along somebody, somebody on our boat jokes all the time is like, we're going along like as fast as you could go on a bike and uh, who, who would choose to, you know, ride their bike around the world. Uh, and here we are floating <laughs> along doing pretty much just that, you know, 10 or 15 miles an hour, just plodding along. Oh, wow. um, it's pretty absurd thing to do, but uh, it's an amazing, amazing experience. So I'm certainly grateful for the opportunity and I'm certainly glad that I've put myself into this and, uh, Got to stay healthy, got to stay out of trouble, uh, got to make sure that, uh, you know, we safely get across this next ocean and then, uh, you know, we'll take on the next one from there. Yeah. Amazing. Woohoo. <laughs> well, um, thank you. I mean, I think, I think, you know, You're we're welcome. wrapping up. It's, uh, yeah. it's a pleasure to talk to you. Well, likewise. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have a great conversation from Seattle. I'll look forward to that. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, look forward to seeing all my friends and uh, family there. And uh, yeah, can't wait. But at the same time, it's, you know, 28 days. So it'll be just enjoying the whole process of getting across and being safe and uh, taking care of ourselves. Um, so yeah, look forward yeah. to seeing everybody uh, from Seattle. Yay. And I love that you say that, right? Like there's getting there, but that's not why you're doing this. You're not doing no. this to get there. You're doing it to do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we will be reminded that we need to be on, uh, on attention, I'm sure, very early in the race, that it's uh, one watch at a time, you know, one day at a time, uh, sleeping well, eating well, taking care of ourselves. And eventually the days just sort of tick by. But um, yeah, you really have to enjoy the moments while you're out there. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um... Thank you, everybody, for, for being here with us, for watching and listening, and um, uh, join the Facebook group, especially if you've got any questions. So the links are all in the show notes. And there is a UNICEF fundraiser. <clears throat> there is a, um, actually, quit. well, there's a, there's an Andrew GoFundMe. So if you're, sorry, my voice is, <clears throat> um, if you are inspired by, uh, if you're listening or watching and you're inspired by what we've been talking about, by Andrew's journey, um, you know, any, any, uh, Support on that is would be much appreciated, I'm sure. I am all I am a contributor to that. So Yep, absolutely. And thank you. Yes, it's definitely much appreciated. Um yeah, the the trip has has yeah, the expenses for the trip are far beyond the cost of the sailing. It's all the stuff in, in all the stops here. Thankfully, I have some very generous crewmates who've offered up 
you know, a spare bed in a hotel room here and there, but, uh, yeah, and uh, that that would be most appreciated. And like you said, we also have a team UNICEF uh, fundraising campaign. Clipper chooses UNICEF as their primary sponsor, uh, sort of donor uh, mm -hmm. organization. So all the teams are coming up with creative ways to raise money for UNICEF. So there is a link to my UNICEF fundraising page on my main website there at coachandrewmoss.com. So that would also be greatly appreciated if that's more your style to donate to a, a cause that's uh, doing good for children around the world. Um, mm. Yeah. And then links to follow the race, the race viewer that, that Kay had mentioned and everything about the race and the boats and all that is, is there. There's a live Facebook uh, uh, link to the live Facebook feed, which typically you'll get when we're coming into port, you'll get, and when we're leaving port, you'll get a live Facebook feed to see mm -hmm. us, see us leaving and coming. So that's fun. And uh, yeah, hopefully lots of interesting information that I've put up there. I put a little bit about my, the whole inspiration for me to do this as well, which, uh, you know, goes, goes way back to my childhood. So that's all included on the, on the website. Yeah. Yeah. That is fun to know about too. That's a great, a great aspect of this. Cool. Well, we will uh we'll see you in Seattle. <laughs> see you in Seattle. Yay. All right. Take care, Kay. Enjoy your time in Colorado. Yeah, thank you. And enjoy your time on the boat. We'll see you soon. I will. All right. Thank you for listening. Where in the World is Andrew Moss is produced by me, Kay Lock Cope. If like me, you're inspired by Andrew's journey, you can follow along in his Facebook group, Climb Aboard Andrew's Adventure. The link is in the show notes. Also, this is the longest time that Andrew has been away from his family and his work. He truly has no idea what lies on the other side of this adventure. You can contribute to Andrew's adventure costs and help soften the blow of a year away from his beloved coaching practice by donating to his GoFundMe at the link in the show notes. And Andrew asks that you consider making a donation to his boat's UNICEF fundraiser, also at the link in the show notes. Thank you for listening and for supporting Andrew if you can. Join us next time when once again we answer the question, where in the world is Andrew Moss?